Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is DeLong. This is Ping. We're from the Custom Vision team. And here today, we're very happy to be here to talk to you about how to make your own object detector under 15 minutes. So a little background. Custom Vision is a cognitive service. It's a set of services offered on Azure that brings the capability of AI to your applications really, really easily. All you have to do is to make some REST API calls, and then you can have computer vision, you can have speech, language understanding in your applications. Hello, so I'm Ping. So uh, basically, we are, we are the customer vision team. So by customer vision, we mean like uh, you can upload your own data and train your own model for your own like, uh, task or, uh, or goal or problem. So you can solve your own problem with the customer vision. So last year, like, we introduced this like, classification service in our customer vision. So basically, classification is after you train a model, like for, for example here, you're trying to classify keyboard and mouse. So you give us a new image, and we tell you whether it's a keyboard or mouse or both. So this is a classification service. So here, uh, so for, for example, this image is telling like uh, this image is a keyboard and a mouse. So uh, our customers really like our service, like uh, as we are powered by DeepRing, so it performs pretty well. Uh, but they always ask, ask, ask us for like more details in the predictions. So can we give, give them more details? Like they are always asking, can you tell us where the keyboards are, where the mouses are? So basically, this is the object detection problem. So here, if you if you train a model like uh, to uh, for the mouse and keyboard detection then this is what you get for the results. If you send this image, we are telling you like uh, those three mouse are over there, and uh, there are two keyboards located over there. So we'll tell you the bounding box is information of all those objects with, some, uh, with, a confident, uh, with, with a probability associated with them. So the reason like, we build this into our service is because building your own detection, pro detection model from scratch can be like, uh, very hard and uh, time consuming. You need someone who are really com really familiar with like deep learning and uh, all those kind of fancy uh, object detection models and uh, hy hyperparameter tunings. Also, you need like a powerful GPU machine to train these models because it, it usually takes a long time to like uh, fine tune and uh, train a whole model for yourself. So this year we bring the object detection service in into our custom vision and it's available today at uh, customvision.ai. So we make it much easier for you to do this task. So basically. On our, web portal, uh, on our web portal, our website, which is customervision.ai, you can upload your own images and uh, label your data by just uh, simply putting boxes around the objects of interest around the around thing, and then click the trim button. Then you get a model like uh, in a few minutes, and uh, then you can send the images to your trained model and uh, get your predictions. So here are some highlights about our object detection survey. So basically, we are pretty fast. So if you have a project of 5,000 images, which is the current limit for the preview version of object detection surveys, so we can finish the training in 15 minutes right now. So also, we offer like a, we offer interface, we offer a web UI. Basically, easy, easily you can easily manage your images and the label your images as well. We have feature called we have feature called Auto Box. So before any training happen. This feature can help you identify some potential objects of interest you are interested in. So basically, if you hover your mouse over it, you can see some potential boxes. Also, we, are, we have a very easy to use API and SDKs available. So it's very easy for you to integrate our service into your own applications. Also, we, hold your model, we host your model as a REST endpoint. So basically, after your training, you can send your images to the REST endpoint and get our prediction. So it's available right now, as I said. So it's uh, this website, customervision.ai. So uh, let's 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 do some demo. Like uh, let me just walk you through the whole process of uh, creating an object, creating a project, uh, and uh, train your own problem, train your own data set. So basically, I have a, uh, so it's it takes too long to label like tens of images. So I have a pre-created uh, uh, we have a created like a created uh, project here, which is trying to detect the mouse and keyboard. <laughs> So uh, for, for yourself, it's very, uh, to create your own project, you, you have to like, upload some images. So for example, uh, here we have it. To so here's a, here's a keyboard and mouse picture. So you upload your own data set, and uh, then you get it here. You can, then as I said, you can draw your boxes around the things of, your, of interest. So this is the keyboard. You can label it as a keyboard. But what is uh, even better is, uh, 
what even better is like, as you can see, when you hover your mouse over this keyboard, it's showing like uh, there might be something over there. So, and you hover like your mouse over the mouse, it's the same thing. It said, so our algorithm is telling you there might be something your, of your interest. Also, like uh, this is not something we are interested in, but like our algorithm still figure out that this is something. This is the object, potential object. So by one click and uh, and uh, enter, I label this keyboard. You can sometimes it'll be off. You can just uh, tweak the box a little bit. It's easier with a mouse. I'm, I just have a touchpad here, so so this is uh, this is a mouse and that is keyboard. After you label the data, just click here. So we are done. So uh, here are the, all the tagged images. And uh, one single click on the train button, we start our training process. So the training process for this, can, this size of uh, uh, product uh, usually takes one to two minutes. So to not waste too much time, we just look at a previous train model here. So this is uh, uh, some result for a pre previous train model. So after, finish, after your training finished, you can quickly test. Uh, we have uh, this prediction URL. Basically, this is where this is how you can uh, send an image to your trained model to get a prediction result on some new images you have, uh, like, the, like the image uh, we show in the slides. So here you can send an image URL to the service. Here you can send uh, an image file. So to do a real quick uh, example, we have a quick test here, which allow you to quick test your model by some uh, images you upload. So we have another image in the picture folder here. It has a lot of a uh, keyboard and uh, mouse over here, so it gets. So as you can see, this is a prediction result of the trained model. So here you got a few. We, we got a lot. This red box are the predictor, pre predicted objects. So we got all those like a mouse's label uh, predicted and those like a uh, keyboards. They are all associated with some uh, confidence. So for example, this one it means so our algorithm think this is a keyboard with a 98.7 percent confidence, things like that. OK, so, uh, so Delon is going to help me like, uh, tell you more about this, uh, how, to, how to interpret this result. Also, our training just finished here, as you can see, moments ago. So. Cool, awesome. <laughs> so now we have a trained model. We have tested an image, and it works pretty well. And as you can see, each box here has a percentage associated with it. That's the probability of how confident the system is that this is a keyboard. Well, for your applications, you probably choose like a certain number below which you just consider that to be a bad result. That's what this slider is for, the probability threshold. And as you increase it, less and less boxes are going to show up. So it's going to filter out all of the ones that are below 78%. Um, so how to choose what number to use here? Uh, so we build this pretty helpful tool for you. When we trained your model, we also did some estimates on how well your model might perform on your production data, on data that you will send uh, once it's deployed in production. Um, oops, it's falling off. Um, so here you will see the same probability threshold slider. And as you slide it, these values, precision and recall, will change. Um, so what you have to understand for a prediction and recall is that it's usually a trade-off based on what your application cares more about. So let's say that your application will try to detect something and automatically perform an action on it. Then you probably want very high precision. You don't want to accidentally trigger an action on something that's not very confident about. On the other end of the spectrum, maybe your application is something that will detect regions of interest and send those uh, regions to a future human judge for evaluation. Then you probably want high recall because you don't want to miss anything. So like I said, it's really a trade-off and you can just see how that trade-off is going to play out as you change this probability value. And you will use that value inside your application to consider anything above it to be good enough. And then we also have this third metric called uh, mean uh, Mean Average Precision, MAP. Uh, it's a more advanced uh, number that will describe your model uh, like in general, holistically. And one way that I use this number is really to evaluate how your model performs in between iterations, training sessions. So if it increases, we, the, the 
better job than last time. Um, so let's switch back to the slides. Shift that? Oh, shift. No, shift. No, no. No Cortana. Uh, no. OK. Um, So we just talked about those. We'll just skip them. So now we'll give you some tips on how to build the best model possible using our tools. Uh, so one thing is, uh, one, you choose uh, what you care more about, high precision or high recall. Or maybe for your model, you will have high numbers for both. Then that's good. <laughs> uh, and two, train on data that you will see in production. So for example, we trained a object detector on just that copper mug, then that model is not going to be able to like, find uh, like classic, cups, classic cups or like, a mug, but from like, above. So if you want to do those cases, that's totally fine, but you just have to give us more data of those type. Let's do that. Um, and thirdly, label your data well. Don't miss anything. So in that image below, you can see that we have three pens, but we only label two of them. What this is going to do, it's, it's going to tell the model that the first thing is a pen, the last thing is a pen, but the second one is not. So the model will get very confused on what is a pen and what is not. So don't miss anything to the best of your ability. And if you do miss any, something, then you can go back into your model and then label them, train again, and it's going to take a couple minutes. And lastly, avoid very, very small objects in the image. Um, so for example, this. I don't think anyone can tell what that thing is. That's a USB adapter. So maybe not try to do detections on those objects. Or if you do want to, then zoom in a little bit. Or higher, have a higher resolution image. So to recap, uh, we are a cognitive service called the Custom Vision that allows you to train your own object detector of, uh, very quickly. So if, you're, if your problem has about 5,000 images, it's going to train around under 15 minutes. Uh, we do have a very easy to use UI that can let you label your data really, really quickly. And if you prefer to use APIs, we do have a whole set of APIs that the UI essentially uses to, to do everything it does. So you could just use the APIs yourself. And we also do have SDKs and samples. Um, and, yeah. and finally, once your model is ready, it's trained, we will host it as a REST endpoint. So all you have to do is to make REST API calls to that endpoint, and you will have object detectors in your application. And we are free to try today. It's available on customvision.ai. So yeah, give it a try. Yep, that's it. So we'll take some questions. I think our session ended a little earlier because we started earlier. So uh, we'll just have more time for questions, I guess. Yes? Ah, so the question is, how accurate it is for face detections? Uh, Cognitive Services does have a separate face API that will do better on faces. So you should just use those for face detection. Yes. Ah, yes. OK. So for object detection, we currently do not have a mobile um, run on device version. But your, your app could always just make rest, and rest calls to the API. Uh, Custom Vision does have a classification service, uh, the one that we announced last year. That one does have uh, export capabilities. So you can download your model and run on device. So do you have an app where you can use yes, so we do have an Android and iOS sample code on GitHub. Uh, so those are open source. And all you have to do is put you, your model in, and you're good to go. So the, you want to so the question is, so what's the under, underlying algorithm? Uh, it, it's, it's kind of a, it's not really typical. We modified our existing algorithm, so we make our own like uh, uh, network architecture to do the job. 
Well, yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's modified based on YOLO. Then. So yeah. So, like, you have pre-trained weights for extra features. Uh, that's too much detail. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Drop by our booth. We'll we'll talk later. Uh, yeah, we are in Cognitive Services Vision next to the Mixed Reality Demo booth. Any more questions? Yes. The question is, do we have any interesting results? Uh, yeah, we do test on a whole lot of data sets. But uh, if you do find anything interesting, try it out and let us know. <laughs> yeah, so basically, we test on a lot of uh, public data sets. And uh, it perform performs pretty well, like on VOCs. Uh, it's, it's like 74 MEP, things like that. So the results, it's a, it's a pretty, we test on like many different data sets. You are, if you are interested, like if we, our boost is at uh, Cognitive Service Vision, which is of that area. So we have like an animal data set, like a result you can see. Like, so we, we can show you more like a prediction results. Yeah, yeah drop by our booth. We'll, we'll try something out. Yeah. Any um, more questions? Will we yes. be able to download the, download the model in the future? Uh, it's not available yet. So we are, we are going to work on the. We don't really have a timeline for it. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. But for the classification, we can explore right now. So yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, yeah, so, so yeah. the question was, can we download the, the model? Uh, no, right now we can't. But like I said, it's all REST APIs. So even if it's a mobile app, you could just make a request and try, th try it out that way. So, OK, no more questions. Excellent. Um, yeah, please remember to evaluate our session. And there is another talk at 3 in room 612. Six, yes, sorry. 612 about uh, computer vision and uh, further details on how co uh, custom vision and cognitive services in general work. So do drop by that breakout session on 612 upstairs. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.